Hello, I am Sirius Cow King and welcome to my tutorial on wooden beams. Well, wooden support. I mean, it includes really any wood. Um, so, first off, if you're looking for steel support, I already made another video tutorial on supports. It's just I didn't include any wooden ones in that one so I'm making a new one today so uh, when you first off when you build any kind of ride that you're gonna want to have custom supports on it like it doesn't have to be the whole ride but let's say for example that you hate this on this because well I did hate it actually because it was going over this but in in a sort of way where it just didn't fit at all. You can remove this part. Uh, to remove just a part of it or all of them for the supports, you need to edit the ride. And then you select the part where you want to add or remove the supports. And your option is right here. Track support. There you go. So, yeah, like, see, I... It just felt weird. I don't like it at all. It's it's really messy. It's th This one is buggy. Usually it's not buggy like that. But I didn't like it. So I was like, you know what? Let's remove it. So whenever you have something like that. Uh, you remove your sport. And the first step is actually to choose the color. Um, because once you do... Once you put your support in place, oh, that's for, that's for the track. See, uh, once you put your support in place, it's gonna be much harder to change the color. I got the wrong one again. Oh, it's this one. Ah, there we go. That's the one. There we go. Um, yeah, custom supports are harder to change the color. I mean, it's not. Harder is just that once you've built all your custom supports, then it gets more complicated to change the color. So the first thing you should do is select your color. That's sort of important. Um, so once you got your color down, then let's look at options. What do we got? Well, um, so most of the supports, like the steel supports, are all in here, in buildings, walls, framework. This is all your steel support. You have a few cell canopy and wood frames structure here, but these are clearly not supports. These are really just decorative for like the western style and the pirate style of the game, basically. So those are useless. Then you have the mouse chase stuff, which is obviously made to go with the mouse chase ride. It is what gets as close as possible to this. Um, see, uh, this one was this color. Yeah, see, it's as close as it gets, but it's not the same size as you can tell. The um, concrete square is the exact same size, but this is a bit smaller. This also uh, was this color. The beam is also a little bit smaller, and as you can tell, it's not exactly the same purple because this one has a wooden texture to it, it's sort of a raw wooden. Uh, texture while this one has more of a painted texture so it gives you a different finish which means if you wanted to actually use that you would need to figure out what's the appropriate color there you go that one would be as close as it gets um, but there's also one very important issue here diagonal beams there is no diagonal in the uh, mouse hunt things because they are all on a grid. The thing is, the mouse hunt ride is on a grid itself, so that's why it's not 
compatible. I did use it in the past uh, to just just add a few details here and there to one of my rides. Uh, when you see it from far away, you know it kind of blends in. It, you you don't really notice it. But the annoying part is that if you want it to stay on your grid, you can't uh, just edit and make some more because well this one seems to be aligned yes this one still is good uh, we're getting see we're getting off now it's getting more and more off because it's not exactly the same grid this is on a grid this is technically not on a grid so your only option if you want to use this uh, you need to build sort of a basic structure, you know, vertical, horizontal, and then duplicate to have the exact same spot. Um, it is a kind of a pain to do, but yeah, it works for small detail quick. Like if you just want to do a small part like this, well, that's kind of a big part. Uh, what I did in my park was a much smaller detail than that, actually. Um, so yeah, like if you just want to do a few small details here and there, uh, without complicated, without complicating yourself too much. But it's I don't recommend that. So other options, uh, they are all in the columns section. So still in buildings, walls. Instead of framework, you go in columns. Scroll down. So you have your thick wooden beam here. Don't use that. Look how big it is. It's ridiculous. It doesn't work. And also, it's still this painted finish. This incompatible paint color that, you know, it really just doesn't work. Um, so next, you would have the wooden column. These are made to be set on a wall. So if you're just putting it on the ground and aligned to surface, well, as you can tell, they are on the ground. Um, but yeah, just, you know, make sure you have your angle snap before you raise them up. That's all that matters. Uh, but yeah, I can, as you can tell, it's pretty big. Color-wise, it is compatible. It does have this wood finish. Um, these, I don't suggest to use them for roller coasters. I personally use them to decorate buildings because of how big they are. Uh, you'll notice, I'll just uh, reset because it's easier to see this way. Uh, you'll notice that it has this weird, ugly end at the top and bottom. Um, I noticed that it's also not flat, as you can tell. Uh, any any piece, if you push it together, it creates some Z fighting, but not this one. This one is, you can see that it's sort of tilted a little bit. Um, I think the intention, or at least from what I observed, is that it's meant to be pushed in together. I'm just gonna rotate it so that we can see it clearly. There we go. See, there is this one side where when you push it together, it just blends in. Just like that, see? And then it becomes this sort of not bad looking beam. It's a little bit crooked, but it's pretty good. It can definitely be used for buildings. Um, if you look at this one side, there's still Z fighting, but it's the only one side. So you, what you can do is make sure that this is touching your wall, or you can just move it slightly to the side to uh, prevent that Z fighting. You can also, you know, use that to make this disappear, basically. Um, yeah, there we go. And now no more Z fighting on this side, but yeah, it's it's sort of a weird asset. It can it has its use. I started using it a lot, in fact, 
but I don't recommend it for supports. Maybe if you want to make uh, kind of like these thick ones here, you could technically use these supports for these, but they're not going to be very pretty. Uh, a lot of people download the DLC, the um, I think it's the spooky one, has different beams. They're easier to use, but that's not your only option. In the main game, there is a possible option for you to uh, fix this. First off, there's the wooden posts as well. Uh, that's another option. Takes a moment to load. These are very thick as well, as you can tell, um, and they are meant, they are built on a grid. So I believe that these are meant for these. If you want to replace this whole structure by something custom, this is your friend. This is what you can use. Um, but yeah, that's uh, it's still on a grid. And they cannot be colored, as you can tell. So that that's not, you know, it, it can be used for stations, basically, or buildings. It could be used under a building. That's true. Uh, but yeah, my personal favorite, I would say the best of both worlds, uh, these ones, the wood pillars. Now, they are a bit bigger as you can tell but they can be colored they are not on a grid they have that wood texture and there's three different size very versatile uh, you can do everything with them personally I would suggest uh, using the two meter and here's the reason why if you put two of these together you will get some Z fighting right here. It's horrible. But you can rotate 90 degree. It fixed the Z fighting. However, there's still this visible line. And it doesn't matter how you position them, there's still this visible line. Also, uh, small things that I forgot to small thing that I forgot to mention is that all three of these, well, okay, this is the carved one. This is something sort of different. So this, this, and this. All three of these have a darker and a brighter side. Different textures. You can actually play with that so that it looks like different planks. Um, I made some cute little balconies with them at some point. Very interesting, the fact that you can do that. Uh, but yeah, what I suggest you to do is use the 2 meter one. Because the 2 meter one, also it looks brighter, that's just because the default side is, you know, just rotated. But it, it's the same asset, basically. It's just shorter, kind of. Uh, but yeah, the 2 meter one still has that Z fighting thing, but if you rotate, it fixes itself. But yeah, as you can see, no seam line. So because of that, the 2 meter one is much more versatile. Once you have made two of these, like this, that you know you rotate the one at the top. I'm just going to put that in one. There we go. Uh, once the one at the top is rotated, you can just copy-paste the whole thing to make it longer because now you have one default position, one rotated. Default position, rotated. So you can just keep going, keep going. It's not longer because you have more asset. Do keep in mind that more asset count does mean less performance overall. It can become a problem if... Uh, you know, if you if you make a giant park, like a mega park, or if your computer is not too strong, um, every bit of asset does add up over time. So I would suggest to, you know, keep it to a minimum. But 
you know, if you make a mini park, like I love to make tiny parks now that that's all I do. Um, the, that's a perfect solution. Uh, for the support at the bottom, if you go here in the framework, you'll see like foot extensions. You know, you have your regular footers and then you have the extension that you put underneath. That's your concrete. Except every single extension are freaking huge. Don't think that these are. These are actually metal. Uh, if you look at it Closely, you'll notice these are made of metal because these are actually supports, not footer extension. All right, so every single one of them are way too big. What I suggest you to do is go back to the columns where you know you already were anyway. So that's what we're using right here. You just scroll a little bit back up, and right here, concrete column, not on a grid. So what you can do is you select your first one and use that axis to have this perfectly straight. Uh, this should be good. Just pick your color um, and adjust the height. Now it doesn't have this cute little metal thing. You can always just improvise for that using a Iron glider, I believe they are called. Uh, it's in decorations. Hello? Is it? Is it in decoration? I actually forgot. No. Okay. Is it even in a building? It might be in scenery. Iron. Yeah, it's in scenery. That's why. That's why I couldn't find it. So yeah, iron glider. There we go. So you could have some fun with this. Personally, I don't think it's needed, but that is an alternative right there. Uh, just pick the right color. Uh, in this case, would be this. Yeah, it's so as you can tell, it's not the same finish. So once again, you would have to figure out the right color because that was uh, that color right there was this orange. So yeah, you would need to ch to find the correct color. But yeah, that is an option. That I would say it's as close as it gets. Um, you know, if you look at it from far away, of course, uh, right now I don't have the right color on the wood, but if you look at it from far away, it actually sort of blends in. It The illusion is there. See? I mean, I we're looking straight at it now. We just paid attention to it, but once you have your, your whole structure in... It can be... The illusion can be there. Um, next step, I would say... Um, you will need to create a structure, right? So, right here, I sort of duplicated the exact same structure. As you can tell, you know, the tilted here. Uh, if you play, pay closely attention, you'll notice that there's a little gap... So I've kept that little gap here. So that is as close as it gets. And you know, once you once you make your horizontal line, your diagonal line, and the next horizontal line to have your height in, it's pretty quick to just copy paste, copy paste. It's really just a matter of duplicating. You can make a giant structure in a in a matter of minutes. It's really all about making the first structure that's where it's at but personally I'm not like I would say that once this the structure is this big it looks good yes but before it gets that big if you look at it from just you know this one piece it feels like it's missing something especially if you look at it this way so um, 
I decided, you know what, let's experiment. So here I added a whole, a, a whole X instead. Here I pushed in, removed that little gap, started to duplicate more. Then I made a whole structure. And then I figured, hey, if you're gonna make custom supports, why don't push the limit and make actual custom supports? And now you have a bridge. This could be used for a path. This could be used for a monorail. Anything like that, you know. Um, once you have your basic structure, it's actually very easy and quick to do all this. I decided not to do it on stream because, well, you know, video that never ends. Um, and yeah, using that technique, I could technically have filled this whole area. I just didn't bother to do it for the video. Uh, but yeah, I could. It's like, I expect, honestly, to, like, I could grab this one here and put the right colors in. And then once I have that, put it in position and I could fill this whole area in about, 10 minutes. That's what I think I, I could do. According to how long it took me to make that. Yeah, 10 minutes. This is done. Um, so, this here, the diagonal, there's uh, something that I've seen uh, people do a lot. It's you have, you know, these turns, and when you have a turn, what's fun to do is to have some kind of diagonal beam to so that it looks like it's supporting the weight from the inside to the outside kind of thing so something that i looked at is okay well what angle do i need because if you have these tilted beams basically you want it to go through here and here and then back down and You'll notice that it's actually the same height difference from this one to this one and this one to this one. It's always the same height difference. So once you got that angle down, the rest is much easier. Turns out it's very simple. It's 15 degrees. So just go back to your columns. Uh, for this, I do suggest this, well, I mean the 2 meter pillar. I'll just use the formula just to show you. But uh, yeah, like, you should use the 2 meter pillar. Just that the formula is going to be faster in this case. There we go. So, 15. Let's put it at the top here. It's sort of at the top. Boom. Look at that. Straight at it. There's almost, there's just a slight, slight difference. So you can definitely use 15, uh, 15 degree and it's going to work totally fine. So if I close the gap here. I'm gonna do it kind of a. I'm gonna do a terrible job at it right now because I'm just I just wanna you know not take too much time. So there we go. Then you can just move it very very slightly to fix this at the top. So. Yeah, so it's almost 15. I would say it's probably 14 and uh, I would be like 15 and 0.2 or something. Um, so yeah, a good solution for this actually is instead of going at the tip here, you go there where the, you know, the, the wood is attached. So if you do that, it looks like it's going through all of them, or almost, almost. Like, the illusion will be successful from far away, 
it's going to be good. Of course, if I change the color, it would help. See, oh, look at that. And now it looks natural. What? So you, using that, just 15 degrees, you can do all your tilted parts like that. And you can continue them all the way down if you want to. And then have your little footer out of concrete. Problem solved. So you can smooth, basically smooth out these, which looks a little bit bulky. I still like the way they naturally look. You know, the, the way the, the game makes them. It's a quick and easy thing, and I think it's pretty. But I've seen people work with custom ones, and it can be pretty amazing. So that's it for wood supports. That's all of them, basically. Uh, like I said, if you have the uh, spooky DLC, there's uh, a different wood beam. Is it the spooky? What content pack is it? Spooky? Yeah, there we go. See, hunt and house wooden beam. These are very pretty. People and pillars. People use them a lot because of how slick it is and everything. Um... They're also pretty thick, though. But yeah, they are definitely pretty. I I understand why people use them. I just don't use any DLC. It's my personal thing. I like to challenge myself. Um, so yeah, that's basically it. Thank you for watching. And uh, see you next time.